All right. So let's start with the module number six. Module number six is all about UiPath orchestrator and work queues, right? Some of the concept that we wanted to learn like object repository, library, reusable component, those things will be also covered because those requires, you know, some knowledge about how you can, you know, import a package, how you can deploy a package and all those things. That's the reason they are not been covered, but they'll be covered in the module number six, right? So let's quickly look at what is the agenda for today? or what we're planning to do today, right? So we'll be working with the orchestrator. That's the first thing that we need to do. We need to understand architecture of UiPath orchestrator because that's really, really important to understand how various component of UiPath orchestrator works, right? How logging works, how you can communicate with a third party system, right? Then we'll look at dashboards. We'll look at some of the security features. We'll look at robots. We'll look at the processes. Today, we'll also try to work on a way where we can deploy a package. So how the package publishing works. We'll also look for the client deployment and robot and machine provisioning. I might not be able to complete robot and machine provisioning in the first lecture because there are a lot of things which had changed into UiPath orchestrator and now they are managed in a different way. So previously they are uh, you know managed in a way where you need to define a machine and then you need to copy a machine key and then robot is will be deployed, right? So now there's a different ways of doing it. So we'll give a complete working session on robot and machine provisioning along with the user accesses. So that will be a separate topic we'll discuss. Then work use and working with a work use example will be in another session. So we'll discuss first three, three, four things, working with orchestrator, how to provision different, different services, dashboard, monitoring, processes and package public uh, package publishing. So that's what we are targeting for today. We'll also look about how we should be able to look at the logs at the orchestrator, right? To debug the issues and all those things. But we are not going to cover work use and robot and machine provisioning in today's lesson, right? We'll cover that in a subsequent lessons. So let's quickly look at what is UiPath orchestrator, first thing. So UiPath orchestrator is a web based application that enables you to orchestrate your UiPath robots in executing environment to run repetitive business process. What are the features? What are the main capabilities of, you know, your UiPath orchestrator? So the main capabilities of UiPath orchestrator is provisioning. That means it creates and maintains the connection between your robot and the web application. There is a mechanism of the heartbeat that I'll explain when I go to the architecture diagram. So the robot sends a continuous heartbeat to the web application so that it gets the information about your robot. Then the second capability is of deployment. It assures the correct delivery of package and versions to be assigned to robots for execution. Then it also maintains and delivers the environment's configurations and the process configurations, right? So there is a concept of grouping a robots into environment. There is a concept of grouping robots into folder. There is a concept of creating assets, creating credentials and all those things. Guys, those who are not speaking, please put yourself on mute. Right. So then there is a concept of queues that ensures automatic workload distribution when we talk about the multi robot architecture right so if you want to work on a different work item you need to put them into queues and then first in first out order they'll be executed so, so those things we'll also discuss uipath orchestrator is also used for monitoring the run i mean it keeps tracks of the robot what exactly being done at the run time right you should be also able to monitor the numbers of items which are pending into the queues. You should be also able to understand how many processes are been completed, how many processes are running and all those things. This is basically for RP support person who is looking after all the processes that is running into orchestrator. Logging is an additional, you know, I kept this separately because that requires, you know, <laughs> two things. One is the data visualization part and another one is the logging part, right? Logging can be done in a UiPath orchestrator database, but some of the organization where there are lot many processes are running, they also store and index the log 
to a different third party tool known as elastic search right or you can use on a top of elastic search you can use kibana or you can use power bi or you can use tableau to create a data visualization so that you can present a graphical representation of what is happening in ui path orchestrator to your management lot of people i have seen they have created a copy of a sql database and reporting is done from the copy of sql server directly into power bi so those things can be also done then we talk about the interconnectivity right acts as a centralized point for communication between third party solution and application ui path has recently launched a feature called integration services right previously they are managed through you know storing a credential and all those things now they have a separate component called integration services using which we should be able to communicate with different third party softwares like servicenow salesforce oracle crm google cloud and lot many other right so last time when i looked at the integration services there were there were 15 you know connectors were available so we'll look at today and we'll see how many connectors are available as of now right if you look at the diagram so keep in the mind ui path studio is all about where you digitize your process or you create a automation in a editor ui path orchestrator is a central location or a web applications which control monitor analyze performance of your virtual workforce or a robot right what is then ui path robot ui path robot is nothing but a run time execution sitting on a machine where the automation has to run now with the release of 21.10 ui path robots are not only capable of running bot on windows server but they they can be executed now on linux or mac as well ui path has recently launched a new component called ui path automation suite which provides container based services so you don't need to install separate component one by one you can use automation suite to use the services as a container right using the concept of docker any doubt guys any point you are not able to understand on this tech before i move to the architecture yes sir this how comes it is because shall i go ahead this point? yeah yeah please the uh, new way for things you know it's working on top of dartnet framework uh, yeah. so dartnet framework supports only windows mission now yes so this is working in this way now how come then it is working in linux and uh, mac the <laughs> mac which are in separate way that's and that's and really good question i'll tell you so how how it works is .NET provides a runtime environment, right? And that runtime environment will be bundled as in a Docker container, and your process will be running on that container. And container can be run everywhere. So you can look at, you can look, sorry, uh, you can look at the details of automation suite. You'll get this, uh, you know, uh, answer more clearly. But yes, they have provided. I have created a robot which is running on uh, Linux environment, right? because they bundled the runtime environment along with you know the package so it's not necessarily to have a dot net installed on machine got my point or should yeah, okay so it's a package but you know we are new to that how the containerization the work like how this how is still uh, this is still this is still in beta uh, beta phase we are still figuring out what all things we can do what we can't do but it's a really good ground break through they have released a 21.10 i am trying experimenting that on one of the new server right and probably i'll post detail about automation suite in you know next few days but just to let you know with the initial try right it looks very promising it's running everywhere the only thing that you need to understand is how to create a docker how to run a docker and all those things and then it will be running there are some limitation in a linux some of the packages are not supported right so i'll show you in ui path studio now they have given an option right so if you want to create a process that need to be run on multiple type of environment you don't need to use a legacy framework you need to use a cross platform framework using which 
a package could be deployed on any type of machine. So I'll I'll quickly go and answer you your uh, you know this query. So open up a studio, go here, create a process, and here you could see three options, right? Yes, sir. The cro the cross platform option has to be used if you want to run your process on different, you know, machines on Linux or Mac. As of now, they are limited support because uh, all packages are not being supported. But yes, we can run it. Got my point? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. Going back to our discussion. Any other questions, guys? That's a really, really good question. Thanks for asking. Any other thing you are not able to understand? Lot many keywords are there in this page. All good. Should I move to the next point? All right. So <coughs> let's look at the architecture of UI Path Orchestrator. What are the logical components, right? So if you look at the UI path orchestrator, it has some logical component. The first is user interface, which is the web application, which is orchestrator we access using browser. Then there are web services layer. So there we have different services running. One is monitoring services, another one is logging services, then deployment services, configuration services, and queue services. So these are the services running. Which interacts with the different component of system. So, if you look at the diagram, at the client side we have a browser, we have an executor, we have a UI path studio. UI path agent could be replaced by UI path assistant, because nowadays they call it UI path assistant. Previously they used to call it UI path agent. The name has name has got changed, right? Then using the browser we access the web application, which is built using the .NET framework. Front end is in HTML and JavaScript. I mean, not exactly in JavaScript. Lot of other scripts are there, but mostly you can say it's a based on HTML and JS. In the persistence layer, there are different web services like configuration, logging, monitoring, right, and queues. Using the browser, you can access those to manage. At the same time, Studio Agent or the runtime executor, which is UiPath Robot, is also accessing those. Through different calls, right? So there are the different ways of accessing this configuration. One is a REST API endpoint. So UiPath Orchestrator provides you REST API endpoint through which you should be able to perform all of these things. Then there is a very small block there called notification and monitoring, right? So UiPath Orchestrator also support concept of web hooks. Web hooks is nothing but when you want to send some notifications. Or events to third-party system via webhooks. Those things can be also configured, right? At the core of the service layer or the business logic, everything works with the use of OData REST API. OData is a specification provided by the software agencies so that the communication between different, you know, system can work in a symmetric way. So O data is nothing but open data specification, especially used for API programming, right? Then we have a persistence layer where we are saving the data. Here we have written a SQL server, but it doesn't mean that UI path orchestrator can only work with a SQL server. It can works with AWS RDS as well, right? It can work with Azure databases as well. Right. Whosoever type of database or whatsoever the type of database should be, which supports the SQL Server compliant, can be connected with UiPath Orchestrator. So database could be SQL Server or RDS or any other thing. Then there is another component called logging. Right. So using the UiPath Orchestrator web config, you should be able to define. That you need to perform logging only into the file system, only into the database, or file system and database both, or file system plus database plus third-party system. 
using the configuration you should be able to define logging has to happen at only at file or only at database or database plus file both or plus third party so that's a basically configuration based system so you can install a elastic search on a same machine where the orchestrator is running or you can install elastic search on a different machine and you can configure using the web config file of uipath orchestrator application so that logging can happen into elastic search now once the logs are sent to elastic search they are indexed right they are stored in a way so that different applications can access this one obvious way of elastic search component is kibana kibana can be used to create a dashboard right at the same time we should be also able to create a dashboard in a ui path insights right that's also access the logging interface so ui path ins insight is another component of ui path which can access the services which are provided by the logging services to access the details of job process packages queues and create data visualizers in ui path orchestrator itself right similarly there are some people when they design their architecture right they can create different topologies for their infrastructure right they can create a dr plan they can create single node or multi node installation they can create you know farm of the sql server or they can create you know a hot node and cold node kind of sql server so lot many you know infrastructure stuff are there right on the basis of which you can also send your logs and matrices which are required to calculate the roi of a process to a different server right say for example there is a reporting server and you want to information of the jobs and the process and queues to reporting server so that data visualizations like if your organization is using tableau or power bi those can be connected using that reporting server any doubt guys here this is really really important to understand if you want to know what are the logical components of orchestrator any doubt here anything you are not understanding or you need more clarification satesh uh, uh, you are saying elastic search should be used for storing the logs right yeah that's a special logs or studio logs राइट So if you look at the internal table details there are tables called jobs there are tables called logs there are tables called process there are tables called queue there are tables called you know uh, job processing and all those things so only the informations which are dynamic and which are you know which need which requires for reporting can be configured to send to a third party but there are certain other information right you are saving a credential you are saving assets like config file values right how many numbers of users are there in your orchestrator right you are enabling disabling the folder access right you are how many packages are there so those things are stored in sql server sql server stores everything right it's not that logs are not stored in a sql server right i told you example that you can configure it to store on file it to store on database it to store on both of the things or it to store on th you know third party applications as well it's all depends how you want to configure it configuration is available got my point satesh satesh uh, uh, we are saying this architecture no architecture with the system browser but we got to know architecture also uh, deployed i mean can be accessed as a uh, desktop based application as well no desktop based desktop based application is not there but there is a mobile application that's is nothing but using a, a api endpoint lot of people has created you know uh, application in their organization using you know api provided by the orchestrator so they have created a desktop application using the orchestrator api that can be used 
they have given you the API. So let's 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 quickly look at the API. Okay, how you can access the API, and then I'll help you to explain uh, more more detail about it. So if you go to uh, your orchestrator instance, so this is my orchestrator. Okay. I'll help you to explain step by step from where you, what you can access, but let's quickly look at the API. So this is the API, right? So when you when you type Swagger after your tenant name, it will give uh, you'll come to this page, okay? And these are the API provided by the UiPath Orchestrator. So you should be able to perform anything that you perform on web application here. Anything that you perform here using UI, you should be able to perform programmatically here. Right? So if you want to create account, if you want to get the permission, if you want to uh, create a folder, if you want to get the roles for a folder and all those things. So a lot of people has created Node.js based application. I have seen few example. They are using this API and they have integrated that into their existing application so that the bot and jobs can be triggered directly from that application. So those kind of things can be also done. It all depends how you want to do in your organization. But that's the possibility. Possibility is yes. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, I, I got your question. So let me quickly go back to the home. Okay. And here, if you go to the admin, sorry, but the home. And then manage. Sorry, let me, let me, uh, you know, uh, do something step by step so that other people. I'll, I'll answer this. I'll answer this. Okay, don't worry. So uh, let's have a look at UiPath Orchestrator. You know, work uh, how it looks like, right? So the first thing when you sign up, you will land up on this page. By default, there is a only Orchestrator. Uh, you know, uh, there nothing will be defined here. So you will come at this page. Okay. So what you need to do is orchestrator it's using uh, i am talking about the cloud i am talking about the cloud so when you work on uh, in your enterprise or on perm that would be different so you can use the same concept software would remain same right but in the organization what we do is we, we install different instances of orchestrator right so for dev there will be a dev orchestrator for uat there will be a uat orchestrator or pro, for, for prod there will be a prod orchestrator that's a one way of doing it other way of doing it, there could be non-prod orchestrator for all dev, UAT and set environment and then there will be a prod orchestrator for production environment. That's the second way of doing it. Third way of doing it is you got a license for the cloud instance, right? And there you create tenants. So I can create a dev tenant, I can create a UAT tenant, I can create a set tenant, I can create a SQE tenant and then prod tenant, right? So everything would be here only. So let's quickly create a tenant called prod, P R D. Okay. Now, when you give the name, it will ask you for the tenant reason. That's basically where your data would be stored, in which cloud location. Okay. So here we have a couple of options. So based on data privacy policy of your organization, you should be able to select this. So let's take example of let's select the United States. Okay. Now, you have options of provisioning the services, right? By default, some of the services are checked here. At minimum, what we need to select is orchestrator, right? We'll create an orchestrator in staff. What if, if you want to also include the add-on provided by the UI path? Say, for example, I also want to use AI center or data services or the integration services that I talked about. 
or UiPath Insights, which is used to monitor and report the KPIs and dashboard, right? Then similarly, we have a test manager, which is used to run and manage the test cases for the processes. So you should be able to do this. For sake of simplicity, I'll create everything. I have enough license, so I should be able to create all of these. Okay, and let's save this. This is the first thing that you need to understand how to provision a service, how to provision a service to a tenant. Okay. So you look at now we have two tenants and the services here are much more than what we have here. Okay. Now, second thing that you need to understand is how to assign a license. So for assigning a license, you need to click on this, right? Based on the licenses, you should be able to, you know, give the license. I don't have licenses because I have given everything to this. So what I'll do is I'll subtract something from here. So they'll become free. And now when I come here, I should be able to assign them. So what I'm trying to explain you here is licenses would be given you on the instance of an orchestrator and you should be able to manage the licenses among the tenants based on your need and requirement. Say for example, in dev, you only want one studio license or one unattended license, but in prod, you need four unattended license. So those license configuration could be done from here. Got my point? Now, what we need to do next is, we need to refresh the page. Okay, and now click on orchestrator, this orchestrator. So now we, know we are in a different instance here. Prod. So first time when you launch, it will showcase you this new navigation window, which tells you where you can access what. And notice of one thing, previously we have only few items here. Now we have lot many new items appeared, right? So I'll discuss about those things as well. So let's quickly close this one. I just wanted to showcase you here is you should be able to switch between the tenants from this. You should be able to switch between folders from here. These are the folders that you have and the information required for <coughs> the tenant will be accessed from this tab. Let's quickly go back to admin. Okay. Now we have these many other things are available here, right? We have these many things are available here and we should be able to access all of these. Let's say, for example, insights, we should be able to access insight from here. So UiPath insight will come. This is a UiPath insights, right? Similarly, we have integration services, AI center, automation ops, admin, and UiPath apps. So this is what the integration service I was talking about when I am saying the third party connectivity between your UiPath orchestrator and other application. So you can see lot of connectors are available. Last time when I looked at, there were 15 connectors were available. Now I guess it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So almost 40 connectors are available. So you should be able to automate any of these external third party application using the connector services like Workday, Salesforce, you know, Oracle, Dropbox, those things. So this is about the integration services, how integration services will work. We'll discuss in more detail. We'll, we'll, we'll have two huge cases where we'll connect with ServiceNow and, you know, SAP system or Salesforce. We'll look. Uh, on the basis of which we'll, we'll give the example. So then we have AI center. So you should be able to create AI based your projects here. Then we have a concept called runtime governance, right? How you should be able to control who is capable of doing what in your organization. So you should be able to create a governance file. You should be able to create a governance rule. And then on the basis of it, it will be deployed to the user. So users should be able to perform required tasks on the basis of governance file. Then this we have already talked about. And then there is a UiPath apps, right? 
which is nothing but giving you a you know a form based interface from where you should be able to trigger a bot so you can what you can do is you can create a interface right or a front end ui for your bot to be triggered and those things be, most of the use cases for the apps are in contact center whenever you call a customer care they need to fetch the multiple information from a different system right so it's really really tough for them to navigate to different systems. say for example you are calling airtel to get your a airtel bills along with your broadband bills and all those things right so you are using multiple services of airtel and they need to be presented to your customer care executive at the other side in a single page right so you should be able to create a new new app ui path apps with four partition into it one fetching the information from you know billing system one fetching the information from broadband system one fetching the information from their sap or accounting system one fetching the information from their you know ticketing system so everything will be listed on a single dashboard and then they would have also option to trigger a bot which can do certain operations into the background so in those cases uipath apps would be really really useful right now there is also a concept of data services this is also really a new new thing so what they have done is you know uh, instead of storing your data into you know enterprise database or a third i mean in oracle or whatsoever database you wish to prefer you can also save and store data into the persistent layer at uipath database services in a no sql form so you can create your entity you can create you know entities are nothing but tables right so you can create your tables you can store the information here so that the multiple process in your organization can access the data so the huge case would be say for example you have four five processes in your environment right or in your organization that need to access the informations which is been completed by process a process b require that informations and complete something and th those information will be required by process c so those kind of data in transition could be stored here so that all the processes can access data you know easily right a lot of advantage and disadvantage of data services so we'll look at a quick example where we'll create a products and orders based you know a robot to see how data services work so that will be coming in module number 10 i guess all right so coming back to the questions how we should be able to deploy the robot services right so whenever you have you know enterprise uh, license right so when you have an enterprise license they'll provide you an installer okay they'll provide you two types of installer one is a msi and one is a platform installer right so in the platform installer you have option to select the component you want to install on your machine right so usually in any organization in my organization also what we have done we have written a power cell script right and that power cell script is connected with the service now so whenever somebody request for ui path studio to be installed right he creates a ticket and a service now service now trigger that you know uh, power cell and that installation gets goes automatically so using those concept you should be able to you know install and manage the component individually is that uh, answers your query or are you looking for some different detail i think it's from sida yes satish uh, if i was looking at the robot uh, Oh, uh, yeah robot is also there that's also a component so you will get a ui path installer right ui path platform installer would be there that you can download okay so uh, in case we want to uh, you know execute and we want to provision an unattended robot mm -hmm. uh, we get pm we can do install this uh, ui path setup on the pm will be considered as a uh, unattended robot mm -hmm. so install you have a studio as a there or only a robot no only robot only 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 robot you need to install studio is not at all required studio is not at all required you have a assistant yeah ui path assistants comes along with ui path robot okay so 
let me uh, showcase you something and then you will understand so when you go here it should be somewhere in users uh, app uh, data ui path what is the path let me open the path path assistant open the file location okay and then we need to open a file location so so if you look here there will be executables all those executables would be here and they are nothing but that different program so when you install it now everything will be installed so diagnostic tool would be installed and then kind of that yeah. Be yeah, robot services will be installed and all those things. Assistant will be installed, studio launcher would be installed. So it comes under the same bundle. Only thing the configuration would be different. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I have another question. Let me look at the chat. But for the installation of human intervention is required. But for the installation, human intervention is required, I believe. No, that's not necessary. So there are a lot many deployment package software available in the market. Microsoft also provide their deployment package services where you can configure how you want to deploy with software. So that's basically nothing but a scripted, you know, way of installing a software. So take about an example of a big organization where you are receiving, you know, 100 numbers of UiPath Studio installation every day. It will be really tough for somebody to go and install that soft software on each machine. Right. So instead, they can create an automation for installation of automation software. Right. That could be done outside UiPath as well. UiPath is not only about automation. There are a lot many other automation tools available. Right. All right. So let's quickly move to the other part of discussion. So I'll go back to the orchestrator. I hope I'm able to help you explain the components of UiPath orchestrator. Now we'll discuss the key concept and the terms, okay? Especially for the orchestrator part. There are a lot of other components I have shown you like AI Fabric, data services. As of now, we'll continue our focus on UiPath orchestrator, the core component, right? We'll discuss about the key concepts of the core component. Then we'll go and discuss other components later, right? So let's look at the key. What is, okay? So these are the key components. So first you should get the familiar with the basic terms and then I'll go to the orchestrator and I'll explain you how these things work. All right. What is machine? Right. Machine represents actual machine where Robert will be executing the task. Right. You can define your laptop as a machine. You can define a VM sitting in AWS as a machine. You can create a partition of machine if you are using a services, right? That's called high density robot. So on a SQL, uh, I mean on a Windows server, you can define partition of your machine and you can define one machine as, you know, robot execution. So that's how machine could be defined. It could be anything. It could be a VM. It could be a physical machine. It could be a laptop, anything where the robot has to be executed. What is environment? Environment is nothing but grouping of robot, right? Say for example, in your organization, you want to segregate the access of one robot to other robots, right? Accounting robot should not access the assets of sales robot, right? Or similarly, it should not access the HR department things. So you should be able to define different environments and you should be able to group those robots into environment and access could be given to environment. But now there is a better way of doing it, which is called folder based structure. This is used when we are in UiPath 19 or UiPath 80. Now in UiPath 20 and 21, we work mostly on the basis of folder structure, modern folder structure. Environment is used for classic folder structure, right? So in modern folder structure, instead of defining an environment, we define a folder and we group robot on the basis of folders, right? So say for example, in your organization, you have five departments, you will create five folders. 
all the related assets all the related credentials all the related things for that particular department will be kept into that folder you should be able to manage access on the folder level so that other people who have access to other folders should not be able to execute or access the credentials configuration etc from the different folder then there is a shared folder as well where you can define sharing between you know different folder so that's the concept of shared folder and then there is a folder called my workspace this is nothing but a scratch pad right so if you want to try something experiment something you should be able to perform those things in your my workspace that's basically that's the purpose we usually do not deploy anything in a my workspace in a production environment sometime we deploy something in a my workspace in dev environment just to test something just to test certain functionality of orchestrator is working or not right now next point what is package package is nothing but a ui path studio project that is published so when you you created a automation <coughs> okay so when you create a automation in ui path studio it will be bundled as a nugget package right that's the reason it is called package it contains the workflow that you have defined along with dotnet based libraries so that it will run and execute a execution environment i'll showcase you what will be the component of the package and all those things so let's park that question what is the what the package will contain just remember package will not contain only workflow but it will also contain libraries along with other dll files and environment specific information for your robot to work what is process process is representation or association between package and environment right why you know why can't we say a package as a process because we can create a automation and based on the different input it could behave differently right say for example you created a sap based automation which can work in hr department as well which can work in you know sales department as well because it's a reporting bot right so when you define a process in hr folder you will say hr report and that will use the package same as what is been used for the process sales reporting that's the reason we can create a association between package and process you got my point so using one package you can create multiple processes okay then what is job job is nothing but a instance of a process job is nothing but a instance of a process whenever you trigger a process to run it is called as a job right a job can execute on one robot or multiple robot it depends on what you have configured at the run time okay what is library a process is called library if it contains activities those are reusable and that can be used for sharing between different processes so say for example we have created a automation which contains how we can log in into sap we can publish that package as a library so that we can use that same code into a different project automa automation project then it will become library what is schedule schedule is nothing but when you want to run a job in a planned manner it's like a cron entries you can schedule your job to run on certain time of a day or certain week of a day and all those things so that's a called schedule then we have called assets assets usually represents a shared variable or credential that has to be used into a project or a different project right say for example sap url for the entire organization is same so you can create a asset called sap url and that sap url asset can be used in multiple projects designed in a 
your organization. So you don't need to define one variable again and again. You can directly use that asset, right? In assets, we can also store the credential so that the people will not be able to see the password. In production environment, we usually store the credential into the assets. And there are third party tools as well, like CyberR, right? Or <coughs> Windows credentials, those are used, okay? Then we have a last concept which is called queues. So it's nothing but a way to store multiple types of data <coughs> so that process can work on those information one by one. Any doubt on any of these terms? All good? Uh, sir, I have a question. I have a student chat. Yeah, please. Go ahead, please ask. It is in uh, chat. Okay. All right, let me look at the chat. I have used external packages in my deployment and if I publish the bot, will the published package will have that external package included? So how did you include it? Did you install that as a managed package published or to the orchestrator? If it is... Yeah, I. I use from managed package. I did one external uh, mm -hmm. nugget I was uh, required to download the file. So yeah. I use that. And oh. uh, after uh, publishing this whole development, will I be having that uh, download file uh, nugget already in this uh, publish? There, are bit, there is a better way of doing it. Let me explain you how publishing work and then I'll explain your question. Park this question for 5-10 okay. minutes. Okay. So let's, let's look at this uh, workflow, okay? So I have created an example process. So it's nothing but I wanted to explain you two things here. The focus is to how we can publish a package, right? How we can publish a package and then how we should be able to, you know, uh, deploy a package, create a process, run a job and all those things. And then I have also taken an example from yesterday, which is left how to use a password as a secure credential. So that's basically from yesterday lesson. All right, so let's quickly look at what this process is all about. So what I have done is, I have created a log message here, simply saying this is an example process. Then I used an activity called get assets. So get assets is an activity used to get the information from orchestrator, right? So if you go here and I go to my orchestrator, <coughs> let me close other tab just to avoid any confusion okay i'll go to dev instance because my studio is connected to the dev instance okay and then in the shared folder there is a tab called assets where we can define the required things which need to be used inside the process so i have defined two think these as a variable a shared variable or a global variable right that nothing but a shared or a global variable that can be used in an automation. So how you should be able to create it? All you need to do is click and create on assets. You have to give asset name. Let's say example, try one. Okay. What is the type of asset? So you can define these four types of assets. This is an interview question. So people will ask you what kind of assets we can create in an orchestrator. So you can create four types of assets. One is a text, another one is a bool, third one is an integer, fourth one is a credential. I'll give you one example. You know, I asked one candidate, can we define, you know, array of a string as a assets in the orchestrator? So yes, we can define because this reason it's taking a text. So what we can do, we can create a curly braces, put the strings as a comma separated and store that. Once we receive that test information in a UiPath Studio, we should be able to split that and convert into array string. So that's how you can store the multiple values as well, right? So people sometimes may ask how you can store a multiple values in a text asset. So you should be able to do that. Okay. Uh, sir, it will not be visible if you are using in the UiPath. Then how will you split that array? It will be not visible. How, how, what do you mean by not visible? I mean, if you are using a set, then you cannot see a password and ID. ID password you cannot see in the 
I will showcase you how you can see the password. Don't worry. Just wait for five minutes. I am coming there. Okay. So this is how you can create a test test you know test uh, asset name. I need to help you understand. There is a concept of called global values and there is a concept of called individual value. Sometime I told you an example that you do not want your assets to be accessed by some other processes, right? So there is a control given. What you can do is this assets cannot be used by different user. So you can define which user can access it, which machine can access it and then the value for that machine. Say for example, for this machine, the value would be this and for different machine, if I have another robot installed here, I I don't have any. So you should be able to define value per robot. So for different robot, different value would be given here. But if you if you define a global value, same value would be given to all the robot like this. So if it is a global value, you can see value per user. Right. So this is the concept. So what I have done is I have defined a variable called config file this one and the value is this one which is a, a csp file is uh, kept here so i have assigned and click on update that's it okay now go to the ui path studio what you need to do is click on the get assets and you need to make sure that you are connected to the orchestrator and you are in a shared shared folder right if you are not in shared folder you know you will not be able to access those details so you need to look at this now what you need to do, you need to give the asset name. Okay. So asset name would be given here. And the moment you give the asset name, it has following property. So where the output has to be stored. So I have given asset name is config file and the value that I received from the orchestrator will be received into file path. And then I am printing that file path here. Now, just to you know, uh, you know, give more example and create workflow a little longer. I have used this file exist, so I'll check if file is there or not. I'll get the file information, so I should be able to uh, get the file information and store here into file info variable, and I can print file info. I mean, file info like creation time and all those things here. Other activity that you need to use is get credential. So get credential is used for receiving the username and password from orchestrator. So let's quickly go back to here and create our asset called password. Okay. You should be, able, you need to change the type. You need to store username and you need to store password. Okay. And you should be able to give description like system one password okay create so a variable with the pass is created which is of credential type and stored in a credential store so now you need to take this value come here in the studio and asset name has to be given which asset you want to retrieve so the asset name is pass once you get the information, you will store that into it will return username and it will return password. So I am retrieving those value, storing the username into variable called user password into password variable and I'll print username here. Now the password returned by this get credential will return secure string, right? So you, you will not be able to find the exact password. But there are a lot of activities in the UI path available, which requires you to convert the secure credential into a plain text. One example is mail activity. For the mail activity, you need to pass, pass the password in a plain text. You can't pass the password in a secure string, right? Like the example we have yesterday on the website, we need to type the password as a plain text, not as a secure string, right? So what you can, how you can do is, you need to use this one. You, what you can do, you can create a variable and assign new system.net network credential, right? And the method, and then you need to 
pass this you know string dot empty and secure string secure string is nothing but the password itself and convert that to the password so it will convert your password which is the pass variable into the plain string and then you should be able to print the password here for the sake of simplicity what i have done i have printed this in a info and i have printed this in a warning so it will come into a different color like this one okay let's save this okay and run this automation so you will see that this has username is admin that i have stored and password i have kept password that's the reason it is password you will say no it's not the password you are just printing anything so let me change that i can change it to anything let's change the password to test at the rate 1 2 3 you can see it here okay close this update it come again back to this and then password is test 1 2 3 so someone was asking i will not be able to see the password from ui path orchestrator credential so this way you should be able to convert the secure string into plain text and you should be able to see the password but don't try this into the production environment don't try to fetch the information inside your ui path studio and do nasty stuff in production environment that's the reason there is a governance file with the help of governance file we should be able to restrict the uses of system.net.password methods so what we do to stop breach of this password we define a governance file and in the governance file we define that you developers are not allowed to use that particular activity or particular method this way you should be able to stop the breach of password any questions guy on this before i move to the next part Uh, but you know, UI for sales now. Say two two fifty six AES algorithm has been used. Can't decrypt the password. Decrypt the password. Sorry. Yeah, UI for user sales now. Two fifty six AES algorithm has been uh, used mm -hmm. for uh, encrypting the password from the orchestrator. They say it. Uh, they they says it. When you are storing it into a data or a UI path. orchestrator they will be auto in, you know encrypted but the moment you use this 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 you know uh, system.net.network credential it will take care automatically this method is smart enough to convert the decrypted password uh, encrypt uh, encrypted password to yes, plain string okay this is an entry question this is an interview question yes so orchestrator how you will be able you, you what you can do is when you go to the setting you should be able to see the everything like you know uh, encryption and security and all those things here it is i think uh, somewhere it is so i need to look at those because lot of menu have been changed so i i need to you know um, they have changed this ui path orchestrator entirely different way in a new so there is a option where you can define you know encryptions and all those things so let me have a look it's somewhere maybe here no not here this is only saying where you want to store a credential so you should be able to store a credential on different there is some option right you are right that you 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 should be able to define a you know a encryption mechanism so i need to look at that there is a config any other question guys So one more good question. What will be the difference between uh, asset and credential stores? Because it's in tenant, no? Yeah. <coughs> so see, credential store is mostly used when you do not want to store a password in orchestrated database, but you want to store password somewhere else. Okay. Let's take example. You want to store your password in a cyber arc. Cyber arc is a third party tool, right? So in 
so in those cases you should be able to define the your so you see there are three ways as of now three ways are supported but there is another uh, uh, integration available i i i think it's a theotic services or something i don't know the exact name theotic is another third party tool that's also used so you can store your password in azure key value vault key vault cyberarc or database so if you want to use cyberarc you need to give the details of cyberarc create it and the moment you create it your password will not be stored in uipath orchestrator but it will be stored in a cyberarc instance that's all got it so okay, yeah. yeah all right Yes, how can we access same like uh, same like same same same. That's the reason. It's the one. It's the responsibility of UiPath orchestrator. The moment you fetch that asset, right, it will automatically know where that asset is stored. If it is stored in database, it will get from database. If it is stored in CyberArk, it will be getting from CyberArk. So let me clarify this in a more detail. If you go to the assets, right, if you look here. This is edit this one. Uh, sorry, not this. Let's look at this there. Create a new assets. So when you create this asset, right? That time, this information will be stored. Where it is getting stored? In which credential store, right? So for user, there will be no difference. Same way, you asset. you access the asset from the orchestrator you should be able to access it from the other credential store there is no difference yeah okay yeah, all right guys so now let's uh, move to the next point we are going to publish our first example process to the orchestrator how we should be able to publish it manage it from the orchestrator run it from the orchestrator and what all other things that you need to know right some people ask me can we publish the package without using this publish button can we do that this is also an interview question what are the different ways to publish a package to orchestrator one way is clicking this publish button what are the other ways any idea any guess how we can publish this no let's 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 first let me help you to understand what this package contains so i am not going to publish this in the orchestrator i am going to publish this in on desktop first right and i'll create a folder new folder called pkz okay select this folder next and publish <coughs> so now your package is not published to orchestrator your package is published to this folder so this is your package whatever you have developed that has bundled as a nugget file a new package file right let's extract it and see what all information are there right so let's extract where it is why it is not saying me to extract oh i i think i need to open it okay and extract to package so when you extract it you will get this information one is a nugget specification detail file then you have a package inside the package you have services then you have metadata then core properties this is nothing but a properties required for your package now go back to here then you have libraries and then you have dot net library and then you have settings and then the project that you have built okay now go back again then you have as 
we are not using any other you know uh, uh, dlls and all those things so this is that's the reason it's a simple package but if you you know use uh, a complex process there will be more dependency and all those things so you should be able to look at those dependencies and everything here so as of now it's it's pretty simple but i just wanted to explain you this is the content of package that's the reason we called it package and using this package will create a process right the got my point let's look at one more thing this is really really important so open it with a notepad i, I don't know if i have notepad yeah here it is so this would be xml file which contains the information about your process these all details right and this is the same information that you see here in manage packages so when you create your nugget package and if you publish it you should be, this information is coming from that nugget specification file dependency tags all these things this information right so you should be able to create a beautiful documentation by modifying if you know how nugget specification file can be modified it's like a readme file right so you should be able to put all those information here all right so we published the package locally on our desktop and now what we can do is we have a you know package here right now we should be able to upload this in a orchestrator directly not from the studio so how we can do that what we can do we can go to the package we can cre create upload folder here right and then go to the desktop and then in the select the package oh, right and then upload so package successfully uploaded you will say where i can see that package so this is the package now click here so you will see two packages here one is 1.wo.1 1.o.2 this is the one which i published from the orchestrator this is the one that i published now a few seconds ago and it is inactive so although you have uploaded a package but it is not being used unless you go in a process and create a process using latest version any doubt here this is really really important sometime you need to roll back a package right you do not want to disturb the run of the process because you identified there is a some issue with the latest build so instead of using a latest build you can use the previous build right so let's try this time publishing a package from here so the latest one is 1.0 0.2 now i am going to publish it again so it will become 1.0.3 you should be able to create a package icon release note and all those things okay so this information could be done here so click on next and then in the sheet of custom i am publishing to your path orchestrator next and then publish so package got published this time 1.0.3 let's quickly go to the orchestrator refresh it and look at so we have 1.0.3 here so this is a another way of publishing a package so how you can publish a package directly uploading a nugget package into the ui path orchestrator or from ui path studio many organization are still not using devops concept so what they do is once you design up you know your automation test it in a dev environment and uat environment there will be a support team there you create a change request form and the package along with the other required file and you give them as a artifactory to be uploaded in the orchestrator so support team will do a release they'll do it manually because ui path studio will not be connected to the orchestrator right any doubt here guys any questions this is really really important for you to understand how you should be able to manage the packages
all good should i move to the next point right so we have packages here okay now what we need to do is we need to go to the folder where we want to create a process so we have one process here so click on the process tab you should be able to create a process using add a process now what you need to do first is you need to select the package so i have selected this package the moment you select the package it will show you all the package versions available to you right so you should be able to select the package version and then you need to click on next here it will showcase you what all things will be required for this process to run are they available so yes there are two assets which are required for this process and they are available click on next then it will ask you what the name you want to give this process so i'll say try one and for this process job priority would be high pros and you can define these few things right these are basically properties uh, used for troubleshooting and all those things so let's uh, you know do not dis, uh, change these things straight away go and create so a process has been created now if you look at this is the same process and this is the same process because they are internally using the same package one is using 1.0.1 another one is using 1.0.3 similarly we should be able to create another process using this one and we can say try to create and then for the same package you have three processes right guys you able to hear me all with me or did i lost somebody yes sir all right yeah so this is how you can define a processes okay now what is job i have defined a process using packages now you need to go on jobs so in the jobs you can click on start and then you need to select a process which you want to run say for example try to you need to select the priority this is useful when you have multiple processes running on a same machine so say for example at the same time two processes got triggered from the orchestrator so which one will get the precedence which one will be running first for those scenario this is used so we usually define the process has to be normal or sometime if we think that this process can wait for other processes to finish so we can define as low what is the run time license so you should be able to use the run time license based on what you have available for now i have available everything but this would not be a case for you in testing environment you have only testing and non prod you have only non prod environment and all those things so you can select accordingly for my example i am selecting it as a production unattended then either you can keep these values as default to if you want to run that on any available machine or if you want to run that on particular machine you should be able to select the machine here and then click on start the moment you click on start a command will be sent here to run your process right and then it has just got completed you might have seen a icon disappeared from here so it has just got completed now this process got completed you should be able to access the logs from view logs and this is the log information the log messages that we have put into the here so what are log messages we have put 1 2 3 4 and 5 so you should be able to see all those log messages 1 2 3 4 5 5 right and this goes from you know bottom to top so first message is here second is here third is here fourth is here fifth is here and do you see the labels here info warning this is the same label that we have given in the ui path studio so if you want that message to be printed as warning you can put as warning you can or you can you know select the desired logging labels right so that 
they are printed as as it is so info and warning right you should be able to export this log into csv file because many times you what will happen is the job is running into production environment and you don't have access to it so you will ask your rp support team to provide these logs so that you should be able to see what happened with the bot so these are the two messages are by default printed by ui path whenever the process is execution started and execution completed and then these are the logs that you have written in your workflow and then on the basis of label you should be able to identify what went wrong so whenever you are designing a process if something goes wrong you should write a log message using warning or error or if it is a critical you should be able to write critical and fatal as well any doubt on log messages and how it can be used and how we can monitor it